From time to time, I accrue so much stuff that it's kind of not feasible for me to make so many separate videos on all these items. So I kind of just group them all into one big video. But the primary star of this video is going to be the GetRC Thinking Pig. I just call it the Thinking Pig because the name is actually Thinking P16, I think. But the P16 looks like Pig. So Thinking Pig. And it's funny because it actually flies like a pig. But anyways. And also the Jumper T18, which is I kind of have some sideways feedback on. But I'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, but before that, let's go over the new stuff that's actually available in FPV Cycle, which I'm, I'm really proud of, even though they're very simple and very obvious. So this is the default Cadex Vista uh, antenna that comes with the Cadex Vista. And this is great, but it's really, really short. And if you put it on quads such as this one, which is my whoop that's the frame is stuck in customs right now, the antenna is so short that it actually sits behind the GoPro and the battery. And I just really like this position because it's a nice neat position for the whole thing to sit. And so I got fed up and I asked Rush to make me a longer one. So they have made me one that's two to three times the length with two to three times the wire length and it's way easier to put on any build. That's what you see on this build. And it's also what you see on this five inch build. Nice long antenna up front, uh, out of the way of everything and nice and high for nice, clear, easy signal and it's easier to mount on your quad as well. So that's available in the store. And also another thing I'm very proud of is this longer cable for <laughs> the Vista. I mean, these things are just obvious. I'm just so happy to have them finally because if you're like me, you have tried to fit a Vista into a five inch frame and notice that the wire is not quite long enough to put the Vista in the back of the frame and the camera in the front of the frame and route the wire where you want. So now we have longer cables available. It's also available on the Caddx website, but I assure you I was the one that they told me, no, we won't make a longer wire for. And then they finally obliged and made a longer wire because duh. Uh, this is also an interesting camera. We're going to get it soon. It's a, it's a, it's a the micro size nebula, but it has both analog and digital. And um, we also have the, the small nebula available now in the store as well, plus the regular Vista kit and a couple other items. Uh, finally, we have so many things that are stuck in customs and also just stuck in shipping for ages. It's so hard to get things over here these days with uh, the COVID disaster and everything causing problems. But for now, let's focus on this guy. So this is the GEPRC Thinking P16 or Thinking Pig, as I like to call it. This is the smallest platform I've seen that has a Vista squeezed into it. And there are a couple compromises with doing that. They work really hard to get the weight on this thing as low as possible. It's still not terribly light because the Vista itself, with even even though using they're using the um, Nebula Nano in there, it's it's still a 30, 26 gram package with no antenna. And if you look here, they're using like a, a little whip antenna. And really surprisingly, the signal quality and range on this thing is not a whole lot worse than using the full-blown uh, circular polarized antenna that it typically comes with. So uh, I'm really impressed. I'm, I'm continually impressed with how well the DJI system operates. Now, uh, it's uh, the Nebula I'll talk about in a minute, but let's continue talking about this. So this is a whoop. It's not the smallest whoop. It's like a 70, 75 millimeter whoop or something around the 70, 75, 80 millimeter size. These are 1103 motors. They are made by Speedex, I believe. Speedex is the motor manufacturer for the GEPRC motors. The frame is a pretty thin frame. It's, it's your typical whoop frame. There's really nothing that's been done to specially make this to carry the Vista or anything. The canopy on top has two holes screwed in, or drilled into it to hold the Vista in place. And those are plastic screws as well, which I guess is fine because the whole thing is made of plastic. The motors have nice motor plugs that plug into it. And the whole thing runs on 2S with 8,000 kV motors and these small uh, 31. This, this, actually, no, I think these are the bigger size whoop props. These are the, the Gemfan quad blade whoop props, and I actually like them a lot. Overall, <clears throat> it's an interesting little package, but the throttle is a little bit finicky because it doesn't really do anything for the first 70% or so of the entire throttle range. And that's the primary issue I have with it, because if you weigh this thing with no battery on it, 
it comes out to 65 grams. And with the 2S450 milliamp battery, which is what I would recommend, it comes out to a whopping 94 grams. <laughs> 94 grams for a whoop is, is a bit too much. And it's, it's gonna be a real struggle to get this thing to perform really nicely. But that doesn't mean that it's not really enjoyable to fly. I have had so much fun just exploring. It's so nice to look at things in HD as you fly around and having such a locked signal, even with this crappy little whoop, and the whip antenna, it has such a incredibly locked signal. I'm not really going far distances or behind lots of things, but for a whoop, this is better control and, and the video range that I have had on any whoop or any tiny little craft that I've ever flown. Now, would I recommend it? That's a hard one. If you're looking for a whoop that has the Vista built into it for a very specific purpose or for enjoyment, sure, but I wouldn't recommend crashing this thing like ever because it's, it's, it's basically made of paper mache and you can't quite fit a 3S battery in there, even though I think the, the um, all-in-one board will actually do 3S because the battery bay is just too small. It doesn't quite fit 3S. I guess you could put the smaller 3S in there. Flight time is pretty good, about three, four minutes at least. I've flown it, I think, at least three, four minutes. And um, yeah, now let's talk about the Nebula. So, so the Nebula camera, finally got it, finally tested it on that thing. I actually got, this is the first Nebula camera I received. Go figure, I, I, I don't know why. Anyways, the Nebula camera is interesting because it's Cadex's attempt at shrinking the Vista setup altogether and that was their intention from the get-go when they even imposed for DJI to make the Vista unit at all. And so this is kind of the final step where they attach a nano camera to it. The issue with this camera is that it only comes in 16.9. It doesn't have a 4.3 option, and you also can't run it in the low latency mode, which may or may not be an issue for you. Honestly, I have a hard time telling if the latency is any better or worse with the low latency mode when the high quality mode is actually functioning correctly. If you switch without restarting the system, sometimes the high quality mode gets stuck in like this really high latency mode and it just is awful. You basically just need to restart the whole system when you switch from high from low latency to high quality and then it works out good and has reasonable latency. I mean, I wouldn't recommend using the high quality for racing. And in this particular instance, high quality, as you're already seeing, is not necessarily very high quality <laughs> because the other aspect of this camera is that it has um, less resolution and uh, very over exaggerated HDR qualities and a lot of edge sharpening on the camera which is all very Cadex. Cadex does it on a lot of their cameras are like that. They're very exaggerated HDR. They have a very high edge sharpening. They love sharpening everything. And um, the resolution, well, the resolution of this particular camera is just lower than the full-size DJI camera. So in comparison to the full-size DJI camera, the Nano Nebula is about five and a half grams lighter it is smaller, obviously, and that's the main benefit is that it is a lot smaller. But the larger size camera will give you low latency, much better resolution, and in my opinion, a much more natural and pleasant looking view. And it also gives you the option to run it in 4.3, which to me is a huge advantage because you get a lot more vertical field of view. So you can fly your quad in a more dynamic way. So... I personally would recommend running the full size camera if your quad if the quad that you're running it in can carry it without any problems and can fit the camera as well. Now, what should we move forward to next? Let's look at this guy next. So this is the Nebula which I already told you about but it's the it's the micro nebula. <laughs> so so this camera is a dual purpose camera. It is both an analog and a digital camera, which is interesting because it confirms the fact that you can use analog cameras for digital with just a different signal output. And some of you might have caught that, but uh, yeah, so this camera does both, 
With, uh, I'm not going to show you the FPV feed from it because it's actually a prototype camera. It's not finished yet. The firmware is, is still being worked on and it, it just doesn't work totally right yet. But when I got it, it had incredibly high edge sharpening, incredibly overdone HDR, and it's, it's a very CADEX camera, so it's going to perform like a CADEX camera, at least in the prototype. I have given them feedback to try and improve it. The video feed in analog looks about as good as a Micro Eagle or a Rattel, uh, maybe a teensy bit better than the Rattel evens, which is really, really nice. And I haven't actually tried it in the HD mode yet either. But what's most interesting about this camera to me is that you can actually change the settings on the camera and it will change the settings for both analog and HD. So now you have actual camera settings with the DJI system. However, I don't think that this camera is going to be as high quality as the DJI camera itself. And the weight of the camera is 6.3 grams, which is interesting. It's about three and a half grams less than the full-size DJI camera. The thing about the full-size DJI camera is that it is rather large. Not really the camera itself, but really the thickness of it, the width. So when you're sticking in your frame and you're tilting the camera, it's hard to get the height to fit within your standoff height. So you need at least, for comfortable camera tilting, you want 25 millimeter standoffs. 22 millimeters is what I personally prefer, but 25 millimeters is really gonna give you the right height for this camera to fit into it. Now, other things from Cadex is they have this Loris, Lordy, 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 Lordy. <laughs> this is their new 4K uh, split camera. It's kind of weird because it has a really long lens on it and something really interesting about this particular Cadex camera is that it actually has a metal, it feels like a metal uh, camera casing, which I am assuming they're doing because the camera gets really hot because that's just, again, a Cadex quality. Their cameras, none of these things are bad, it's just that's just how they run. The Cadex cameras just run really hot. So interesting to see that they're taking note of that and putting countermeasures in there. I haven't tested this yet, I haven't put it on anything yet, but overall the system weighs, wow, only 11.5 grams. Pretty impressive. So we'll see if the 4K actually holds up and is usable at all. Other things from Cadex is the Ant. So I got the Ant. It's actually an incredibly beautiful image. I was really blown away by a camera so small having such a nice image. I would say that unless you want to run a micro eagle, there's there's just no point in anything but running this or a micro Rattel at this point. I actually, not a micro, a nano Rattel. I actually haven't had any of the nano Rattels. I don't even know if I'm saying the word correctly, but the nano Rattels freeze on me, which has been really, really nice to see because uh, I had that issue with the larger version. I don't know if Cadex has actually improved their quality control, but they definitely got very angry at me for presenting those issues. And um, yeah, let's leave it at that. This is a really nice camera, but there is going to be yet another Ant variant coming. And I hope to use that one on my uh, whoops like this. The 1S, the, not whoops, sorry, the uh, baby tooth, baby teeth, baby, baby tooth platforms, which is the 1S platform with this camera, and I've got some developments on this platform as well, which is awesome. Even though I haven't even fully announced the platform because we can't get the parts in stock because we just can't get anything shipped over here. And as soon as the, the store started to kind of work out, this COVID stuff happened and everything just stopped moving completely. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, along those same lines, this is the Foxier, here, this one. Here is the Foxier Pico Razor. And this also comes in 4.3 and 16.9. I don't know. Okay, so about 4.3 and 16.9, these camera companies, when I talk, or any of these companies that make cameras, when I talk to them about why they even bother offering 16.9, I do understand that some people prefer 16.9, but I, I, I truly believe that the vast majority of people prefer 4.3, even if the goggles they're using only has a 16.9 screen, because 4.3 on 16 9 actually looks pretty darn good, but 16 9 does not work on 4.3. So for a company to make a camera that only comes in 16 9 is just baffling to me. Anyways, Foxier says that their 16 9 cameras are actually very popular. Maybe I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I, please inform me that you think 16 9 is so much better. In my opinion, 4.3 is 
a far better option for FPV because we do get a wider vertical field of view and we are always flying with tilt. So it just makes more sense. Anyways, this camera is very light. It comes in at 1.5, I believe, 1 point. Actually, it's two grams with the long wire, but if you cut the wire shorter, it'll be like 1.7 grams. And the ant with no wire on it comes in at, I believe, 2.4 grams. So it's a little bit lighter. And the updated, or not updated, the alternative version of the ant will weigh less than, I believe, 1.5 grams. So really looking forward to it. And, oh, I forgot to bring it here. But the, the Pico Razor is 12 by 12 size. So... Uh, it's smaller than the, I didn't bring it out here. It's smaller than the B-Brain V2, which is this like legendary mount that just happens to keep working and working and just keeps proving itself over and over. The Ant actually fits perfectly snug in the B-Brain V2. It just, the back of it sticks out a teensy bit. The alternative version of the Ant should fit all the way into the B-Brain V2. So I'm hoping to use that one for a potential ready to fly quad that I am slowly but surely working on. And what is next? Foxier has made a series of more antennas, and I haven't tried any of them, but they look pretty nice. Uh, look, I'm, I'm not a good test for these random antennas, but they, yeah, enough of those. <laughs> uh, they also have the their new micro F722, or this smaller version of the F722. I actually think this is probably one of the best 20 by 20 platforms or 20 by 20 flight controllers I've seen uh, like ever. Previously, the Mamba board was my preferred 20 by 20 uh, flight controller because it was so easy to solder up and I really liked having that little board map that it comes with. But this one looks really nice. I haven't soldered it up, so I don't know if it's a, it's a pain to do. I actually don't even know if it takes straight 6S, but it looks like it's really nicely laid out so far, but just wanted to point it out. I Finally, we have a half, I mean, there's a there's so many 20 by 20s in process, but they're just not coming out. Uh, there's actually another one from Z's that's coming out that's, that looks really nice as well. I'll show that one a little bit later. This is like a small pet project that I've been working on that I, I haven't, when I when I started doing this, I don't even know what I don't even I don't even remember <laughs> what I was gonna do with this when I started making it. But it is a super tiny little board uh, VTX. It's it's I think it's 500 milliwatts, and it has an MMCX on board. And the intention with this was to run the uh, antenna soldered onto the board, or give the user an option to put on their own MMCX. So the board would basically come with no antenna connector on it and the reason for this is because i hate ufl so much i mean there's really nothing wrong with ufl other than the fact that the ufl connector itself it's such a tiny little platform that it, it just it i've ripped off so many i don't have an exposed one here to show you i've ripped off so many of these tiny little ufl connectors over the years it's just frustrating it doesn't rip off and it crashes it rips off when you try to take the antenna off to change the connector, it's not connector, it's change the antenna. Like you lift it off so gently and the whole UFL rips off the flight, the VTX with it. Uh, before moving on to the jumper T18, another thing I want to point out is that, so the, the main issue with these little tiny cameras with these lenses on them is that they're having a lot of trouble getting a really wide field of view. And what's really special about these, this new wave of these tiny little cameras is that they are a third inch sensor cameras. So they're not the tiny little quarter inch sensor cameras that are on the original Whoop boards. However, and that's a really big however, because the lens has a lot to do with how these things perform. If you have a crappy lens on there, it's just not going to be very nice. That's really the dilemma that they're trying to work out right now. They have the cameras, they have them all done. It's just a matter of finding the right lens to fit the sensor. And so I've been trying to help out with that as well. And the, there's so many words, I'm getting mixed them up, mixing them up. The Pico Razor is a great camera, but it had the same issue. The lens on it just didn't quite have enough field of view and it could, it could, if the lens was nicer quality, it could give it a much nicer picture. So this one that I have here, I've actually modified. I've actually taken the lens off, and this is a whoop lens. I actually 
took the lens off this OV-231, which is a whoop camera. This is the, the lens that you see on this one is the original one that came on the Pico Razor. And this one is okay, but it doesn't have the wide field of view that I like. I actually really love the super wide field of view of the of the whoop cameras. I don't know what it is about that lens. It just has this really nice warpy view that just looks so pleasing to me when I fly around. And I can see so much because we're primarily putting these sorts of super wide lenses on quads that aren't going 150 miles per hour. They're usually great for whoops or slow-ish slow flying things like things like the baby tooth, which I absolutely adore flying. So that view that I showed you is a view from the, the Pico Razor with this whoop camera that I did a really crappy job putting on because I had to file the edge really short to get it to focus reasonably well. And it still needs to get closer to the sensor as well. But hopefully we'll see a really good Pico camera coming out soon that has a great field of view. If you guys, let me know which, what kind of field of view you guys prefer. It's a, of my opinion that I prefer the widest field of view I can get on anything that flies indoors, slow, or in tight quarters. It just lets me see more things around me, and I actually like the view of things not rushing up to me so quickly, sort of. The super wide angle things, it sort of just makes the world look like it's going even slower. Okay, I'm going to get to this quad and some other things as well in a minute. But let's first clear all this stuff away and talk about, uh, before I move on to, to the jumper, let's talk about these props. So the um, Fold prop came out, and it's great. It's gotten some nice reviews. It, there's a lot of advantages to it. The primary advantage that I personally see is that, uh, number one, it's easier to transport. That's really a big one for me. And number two, it doesn't get stuck in trees as easily because the props just fold out of the way. Otherwise, the turtle's great. Um, there's some ideas about the folding property giving it a better balance because it has a, a leading and a trailing edge because the blades can bend around and fold. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, the prop is pretty darn efficient. It's almost indistinguishable from a regular prop, particularly the Gemfan 51433, which is my preferred prop. It's interchangeable with this prop, and I'm running this prop a lot more and more these days because it's just so easy to transport. Anyways, this is the five inch version. It comes in at 4.3, 4.2 grams. This is the six inch version, which I haven't had a chance to fly because I have no six inch quads that are built right now. Everything is in shambles. Everything is constantly taken apart. But that one comes in at 5.4 grams. And here is the seven inch version, which to me is probably the most interesting version because now you can transport seven inch quads really easily. And this one comes in at seven grams even, which is a really good weight for a seven inch seven. It's a really good weight for a seven inch prop. All of them use the same hub, which is really nice. And in the future, near future, it's gonna start getting cheaper because we now don't need, well, they don't need to remake the hub. Also, Gemfan is coming out with their variation of the folding prop. And based on the Rotor Riot episode, I actually talked to Drew and asked them if I could have Gemfan name their folding prop, Floppy Prop. <laughs> so, so they're gonna name the folding prop either a Floppy Prop or a Floppy Proppies. And um, yeah, that's enough for folding props. Let's move on to the jumper T18, I don't even know what it's called. Okay, so this is a little bit sideways. And I'll first go over kind of the somewhat updates that I can you know, rattle off the top of my head. This is the new jumper uh, from, from Jumper, obviously. It is an update to the T16, which was incredibly popular. And you may notice that it is incredibly similar to another radio that recently came out, the RadioMaster TX16S. I don't know these numbers. I, I, I just can't remember these numbers. And so I asked them what happened because previously RadioMaster apparently was producing this for Jumper and they split, something happened, and now they have two radios. And so this one is a little bit more expensive and the differences between the two, as far as I know and as far as a couple people have told me, is that the, the Radio Master actually has internal charging built in. However, the internal charging is so slow that you're probably gonna just take the battery out and charge it anyways. This one doesn't have internal charging built in, but apparently this one has a potentiometer 
or potentiometers in the gimbals, but they're some very super duper special uh, beats me potentiometers on the gimbals that are even more accurate than the hall sensors. And honestly, I don't know why there is even a discussion of potentiometer versus hall sensor. I have never had a potentiometer gimbal go out on me. I mean, I've had radios for four plus years that I use all the time as in hours a day when I was starting and I never had an issue with the potentiometer gimbal. Yes, it does start to drift a little bit more. It's just less accurate in the long run, not up front, but that's also not an issue because in the, in all of the softwares, there's like a dead zone and it's enough of a dead zone to you know negate all that. So compared to the Radio Master, which I don't know why I don't have here with me, this radio, it feels maybe just a touch better quality, it's just slightly better fit and finish. I can't even believe I'm saying this, but I actually think this one looks better, even though this fake carbon is, is so tacky. I, 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 just, I just don't know why radios need to look so darn ugly and have all this stuff all over them. Other than that, the gimbals actually feel really nice on this radio. The throttle on this gimbal feels among the best throttle feels that I have felt on any gimbal anywhere. I would say this is actually the best feeling throttle, but the best and the worst are so, so close that it's, it's not probably not even worth mentioning, but it does feel really nice and smooth in the sense that you can move the stick just, just less than a, like tenths of millimeters and it's nice and smooth and you can do that and when you move it it has some friction to it it doesn't just flop around but it's not restricting you from moving the stick which is the most ideal throttle feel to me that it could possibly have and the throttle is the most important part of the of the whole gimbal system because that's how we fly the quad you have to be able to modulate the throttle very accurately and very carefully in tiny, tiny little movements if you're flying something that's at all powerful. And so this one does it for me. I, I'll talk about it more in a second, but the back of it is also a little bit different. Where the Radio Master had like a big bump back here, this one doesn't have the bump. It's a lot more like the TX, T6, the previous jumper. And this one also has a foldable kickstand thing on here. And it has the module bay and everything else is honestly pretty much the same. It has two buttons to turn it on and off, which is annoying. I... So now let's talk about these controllers in general. I, I am, I'm, I'm saddened by the fact that we have two controller projects that are three, honestly, because the, the previous jumper was almost the same as well, that are almost identical. I mean, either one of these companies could have spent their time, energy, development money on making something that is better. Yes, these are both better in some ways, but they're also worse in many ways. And I don't even need to point out those ways because you already know what they are. I mean, everybody will look at this radio and think, yeah, yeah, okay. And it's just unfortunate that the best options today are either this radio or the Radio Master, the recent Radio Master. And it's just sad that there isn't another one that I can recommend. However, my personal radio still, my personal day-to-day -day analog, not DJI radio, continues to be the FR Sky. X9 Lite, just because I really like the size of the controller. I have my full-size Crossfire wired into it with no problems. It doesn't do D8 or D16, which is super frustrating, but it does everything else I needed to do. I really don't do anything on the controller. And it's a smaller, more compact radio. I have been talking to the owner of Radio Master, and he seems like a super cool guy. I still have no idea what happened between Jumper and Radio Master. I, I wish them both well. Uh, they're both totally fine by me. And uh, I've actually given him all the, all the information and in my designs and all my features and everything of the radio that I have been working on for like two plus years that I spent several thousands of my own money making it happen. And then the company that I was working with just kind of disappeared. So it's just stuck in limbo. So I know that the, Radio, the Radio Master is working on a new controller. So far, it doesn't look very promising, but 
I am urging him to incorporate some of the features and he's going to print my models and see what he thinks about them. So maybe my project isn't totally dead and I'm really urging it to, you know, like I'm trying to will it into existence because there are some features built into it that have never been seen and are just such a convenience factor that I, I just hope to one day see it exist. Okay, so if you've made it this far in the video, I'm gonna show you a couple other things that are on the way and not tell you about a couple of things that are on the way. Oh yeah, oh, I won't even talk about it anymore. Okay, so this is the this is the Cinesplore is what we're gonna be calling it. And it is a Cinewhoop platform. It's a Cinewhoop platform that I have been working on for a, a quite some time now. It uh, it's it's based. I'm not even gonna go over it. It's a Cinesplore. It's cool. It's a Cinewhoop. It's coming. The motors as well. So look for those. And what's really nice about this is that it holds DJI. It's gonna be using just a toothpick or just a all-in-one board in there. So it's a super simple build. And that's actually. I won't even give you too much information. The GoPro mounting platform on this is the same platform that's gonna mount on the. Four ride, which this is the four inch version, and this is the five inch version of the four ride, and that's it's all stuck in customs. It all is stuck in customs. Really hoping to get it out of customs soon. This is a five inch version of that frame. It is three millimeter arms and 1.5 millimeter body body plates. It's a very very light five inch frame. It's not meant for crashing and bashing, but it flies really nice because it's so freaking light and the whole setup and everything is just shrunken down. The same GoPro platform, GoPro platform will also fit on the Cineglide, which is the cinematic frame that I've been working on and uh, I've got some very special cinematic motors that I've been working on as well. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, a couple of the platforms coming as well. Thank you so much for watching this long. If you have been watching this long, I hope this was information and helpful and just overall entertaining for you as much as it is for me. I have so many things that I'm working on that I would love to share that I just unfortunately can't share. I thank all my Patreons so much because they are the community I can share with and I just I cannot thank them enough for their support. Thanks for watching. Brush your teeth. It's very important. Take care. Bye-bye.